Hey guys, what is up? And today, well, really tonight, I should say, we're gonna run. Still haven't got those headlights fixed. Alright, we're gonna look at something, and it's obviously poking her out right now, kind of. It's not a shot, but. You'll notice that my coal load went from coal to gravel. And how did I do that, you were asking? Well, since I didn't have any gravel and I didn't want to go buy some gravel, and I didn't want to go out in my yard and just scoop up a bunch of, a bunch of gravel and throw it in by the handful, I thought, well, I've got some awesome spray in my <clears throat> modeling stuff. I go over there. Oh, to my modeling stuff. This texture spray. It's um this. I got it at Hobby Lobby for six seventy nine, and that's actually this is what I used on my hill. If you look, it's the same exact color. This is a bit darker because this was done about two, three years ago, and that was just done, and it's not really dry. Um, it was dry enough for me to stick it in there. Unfortunately, um, some of it kind of peeled off and stuck to the side, but that's okay. And um, see, so I've got all those black bits in there. That is not the coal peeking through. That is just purely the gravel. So um, it is this textured paint. I've got that. And um, got the sand one that was also used on the mountain. And then I've got this moss green one. And these are all textured. Very nicely. Ah. Okay. So that's very nicely textured. I love how it turned out. Because it, I didn't really want coal because the coal looked bad. It looked bad. It was not finely scaled coal. It was about, I tested it out on that. I think that's dry. Yeah, that's kind of mostly dry. Eh, it's still a little bit sticky, but it's mostly dry. It was about that fine scale. It was bad. It's Bachman coal, so um, it was definitely not that coal. Although this is like O gauge coal, but still, I've seen HO scale and OO scale coal that looks amazing, and that is not one of that. Of the of the fine scale coal pieces that I've seen, and now it looks better with just some gravel. Um, up here in North Texas, I haven't really seen very many gravel trains, um, but I haven't really been rail fanning in a while. So I'm going rail fanning Wednesday. So you guys will get some action Wednesday while fanning. So, uh, yeah. I'm going to, again, drop my Tata's brother off. Just like last time. So while this is running, let's talk about my Christmas list. Um, it's quite a long one, so I've got 
and Avon Genesis UP844 on there, Union Pacific 844, uh, in the black paint scheme, uh, 2016 version of Avon Genesis, because that one does not have the red Mars light, which is accurate for the prototype in 2017, 2016, and, um, very nice model. That one has DCC and sound, so it's a little bit on the expensive side. It's at right at $526.99. And um, I do believe I am paying MSRP for it. Well, now I'm getting slight discounts on these because I'm going through Train World. Train World does give slight discounts on these things. And they all go on Christmas discounts. So that's nice. And I've got four Union Pacific coaches. They are uh, by Wilders. Um, I do believe by Bachman. Um, Wilders by Bachman. Um, fairly nice uh, cars. They look very, very much like the prototypes. Um, and those are $24.99 each, and I want four of them because I do believe only four will fit on my layout, considering how small this layout is. It is three foot by four foot. It's three foot wide by four foot eight and a half. Or no, four foot. <sighs> talking about tracks here. Um, four foot four inches wide. So, um,. Four inches short of being the width of a full railroad track width. Um, but, um, what else? Uh, oh, and then I've got a BNSF ES44DC on there with sounds. Um, and that is 290, no. Two eighty-four ninety-nine, no, two seventy-four ninety-nine. I'm sorry. Um, I'm not reading off the list. I'm going by memory, I believe. Uh, these are. I'm trying to be as accurate as possible because I don't really have these memorized. So they're on the list on my phone, which I'm recording with. That's not very helpful to me. Um, then a Union Pacific. SC70M by all the on mainly Avon Genesis except for the cars that I'm including. Um, that one does not have sound, so that is one sixty nine ninety nine for the SC70M. And I gotta have an SC70M because I have an SC70 Ace, um, and why not have an SC70M? Um, if you have an SC70 Ace. So, you know. And then I've got uh, well cars. I've got um, the well cars. Um, packs of three, so those are, what are they? They're 60 bucks each. Uh, they come in packs of three, so, um, Kind of gives you an idea. Um, so two packs of those. Um, I do believe those are like, yeah, Kato, Gunderson, Maxi, four well cars. And then I've got some uh, different company, I can't remember which, but um, Canadian National. Oh, no, 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 not Canadian National. Yeah, Canadian National containers for the well cars, because those are the only ones that I could find with the magnets on top to where you could stack them and put them in well cars. Um, they're 53 foot long containers. Um, which is pretty big. So, so, um, and then next is the DCC system that I want to use, which is, I believe it is called 
the NCE, yeah, the NCE Power Cab 2 amp DCC starter set. I've looked it up, very simple to use, um, and it is very simple for me to use as a first time beginner to DCC, um, because I severely need, oh, and the containers, by the way, uh, I forgot to tell you the price on those. They come in packs of two, and they are $30 each uh, for packs of two containers. And I will be needing three packs of those since I will have six roll cards. I need six containers. And so, um, as I was saying, the NC Power Cab 2 amp DCC starter set um, is really going to be easy for me to use. As a beginner, because all iPhone Genesis products, their default address is three, and that's easy. Um, I just enter. Go. Uh, I've already watched the video. Go on there, show it up, hook it up. Get everything. Excuse me. Get everything ready, and turn it on, and enter the address three, and it automatically gives me that locomotive that I want. Um, now I'm getting mostly DCC and sound locomotives because I want to make my layout more diverse and have some DCC and sound, um, locomotives. And DCC is actually really, really easy to run on. The only one that's not DCC, um, I believe that is DCC. I believe this has a, oh no. I don't know if that has a DCC decoder in it. I would have to try it out. But, um, I'll have to rewatch the video to remember all the steps. But, for the most part, I've got it down. Um, uh, the only time I will have to use this is, um, as, if this doesn't run on DCC, um, then the only time I will have to use. That is with my SC70M and my SC70 Ace, the two SC70s. Um, so, um, and uh, the the DCC has more options as well. My beautiful car. DCC has more options. You can turn on and off the ditch lights, which I believe, um, I don't think, no, BNSF doesn't ever have flashing ditch lights. Their ditch lights are always, like, static. They don't, they don't blink back and forth. They don't go ding, 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 all like that. They don't do that. Unit Pacifics do, and CSX does, um, but I'm not giving a CSX model because I don't want to get a CSX model, because I'm not modeling for Georgia or Florida or any other parts of the U.S. I'm modeling for Texas. Texas has Unit Pacific diesels down in South Texas, and... Northern Texas has BNSF and um, and mainly double stack car, uh, trains, in which I have a mixed freight train, but um, that's okay because I used to run it with my old um, GP25 that's up there in the cabinet, and that's more more or less a switcher locomotive than anything. Oh, jeez. Um, so we just had a coupling snap. Um, something happened. So we're gonna try to couple. Okay, it's probably gonna be a normal coupling of mine. Ha! Hey, this is the first time it worked today. 
Oh, dang it. It's not the first time that worked. But got it coupled there. It's really hard holding still the camera. Hey, I think we got it this time. Hey, there we go. It was not one of my old couplings. So, um, here's the difference. If you if you don't know exactly what DCC is and what DCC, what the difference between DC and DCC is, well, DC is, you know, it's, uh, the speed is increased by the number of uh, volts that are put through the track. So, um, um, that's why the headlights always start out at low because you're at low, uh, volt, voltage. And, uh, as you increase voltage, the headlights get brighter and the speed increases. Now, with DCC, you can have the choice, the, the headlights remain the same, and the track power always remains the same. It's always at the same voltage. It's the exact um, speed that you have it on the remote, excuse me. Whenever you have it on the remote, it's going to go that fast. It's nothing to do with uh, voltage increase. Um, it is to do with, uh, speed increase, and, which, that is why I want to go into DCC, because I can turn the headlights on and off, I have prime mover sounds, I have horn sounds, I have bell sounds, I have whistle sounds, for anything I want, I have coupler clank sounds, um, ooh, we're kind of close with the camera here. Wish you guys could be right over here with the camera because we are cutting it close with these uh, horns here. Now what I really want is a centennial, but I'm running on 18 inch radius curves. And um, just with this guy, just with my SC78, uh, when I first ran it, I was... Uh, I had to, uh, when I first ran it, to, I'm at a loss for words, but, you know, when I first ran my SC70 Ace here, it was popping off the tracks. Um, I found out why is because, um, I had it, um, had it too close to the wall. If you saw my review, you, you would know that I had it too close to the wall. But also, after that video, I was having problems with it popping off the track. Finally, I fixed it, um, by just, you know, I don't remember exactly how I fixed it, but I fixed it from popping off the corners, um, I believe, I believe I, I don't know what I did exactly, but, um, now, now it works like a charm. So, um, if that is a 12 wheel, 6 axle, the, um, let's see, the, the Centennial is a 16 wheel, 8 axle, and double this size, this thing, that thing's gonna pop right off. It, it's gonna act just like my SD. 40 2 my Atherin blue box, it's up there. And the uh, Burlington Northern green. It's gonna act just like that. And just pop right off the rails, because that's what that thing does for a living, is pops right off the rails. I mean, it just pops right off the rails and stops. the heck? Oh, dude! No way! Goodness! The coupler cracked, dude. Okay. Let's go. Whoa! No! Don't 
Blumen vorbereiten. Okay, wir passen an. Okay. Reverse time. Okay, we're going to get right in on that coupler. Okay, I think we coupled it. Okay, I just want to see um, it in full zoom break, so I'll be right back. Alright. Desperately trying to hold this thing still. Whoa! I did it! Hey! Would you look at that? Alright guys, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you had a fun time. I know I did. Just filming makes me happy. Hope you had a fun time listening to my Christmas list. And um, wish me luck on getting all of those items. Because I truly do want them. For my sake and for your sake as well as the viewers. To have much more diversity in my layout. So thank you guys once again for watching. And goodbye.